All right, so today we'll start on the mat uh, lying down. And as you come down onto your mat, resting the head on the mat, decide what you wanna do with the legs. So they could be extended out in front of you, but sometimes that bothers the lower back. So if that's you, then you just walk the feet in, bring the feet out wide and bring the knees together. Unless you're just preferring this shape over legs extended, that's also fine. Usually I end up demoing this and it feels so good. I just stay here. <laughs> All right, close the eyes, start to take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale out of the mouth. Two more cleansing breaths together. Big breath in. Exhale out of the mouth, let it go. Last one like that. Bring the left hand to the heart, right hand onto the belly. Breathe in through the nose. Softly back out through the nose. Keep going with your ujjayi breath. In and out through the nose, up and down the back of the throat. So we start to find the more we've been practicing this part of yoga, the physical asana part of yoga, that it's really a breath practice. We start here to get our mental focus, our breath focus. Before we start moving. Stretch the arms overhead. Keep the breath. Then hug the knees in toward the chest. You can rock side to side if you want to, or just hold still. Then set the feet back down onto the mat, interlace the fingers back behind the head, lift the feet so that they're in line with the knees, hug the core in, and then move the knees away from you a little bit. So right over the hips, or maybe a little bit behind the hips, look up, take an inhale, exhale, lift up, inhale back, exhale up, inhale back. Exhale up, stay here. Or if you want to go a little bit more challenging, you could hover the legs, extend it out in front of you, right in front of the mat. Inhale back, exhale up. And if it's too challenging, come back to bent knees. Inhale back, exhale up. Inhale back, exhale up. One more, inhale back, exhale up. Wherever you are, Right knee comes in, left leg goes out, twists to the right, so bicycles. And then extend the legs out in front of you unless you're doing knees together. Bring the left knee in, twist to the left. Extend the legs or knees together. And then right knee, twist to the right. So you're going side to side bicycles. It's way harder if you have the legs extended out in front of you. So if it's too much, you just bring the knees together and do your bicycles the way you normally do them side to side, but we don't want to go fast. So keep it slow and controlled wherever you are. And if you start with one that seems too challenging, you know, you can always switch it out. Let's do one more cycle each side. And then hug the knees in toward the chest, rest the head, rock side to side. And we'll take an easy, happy baby. So hang on to the knees, open up the knees wide, and then see where your easy, happy baby is. It's a big pose, so most of us, it'll be too soon to grab the feet. Maybe you start with the backs of the thighs, calves, ankles. Ankles are feeling really nice to me. I feel like I'm getting a nice hip opening. So I'm going to stay here. If you want to go to the feet you can go to the feet you can rock side to side, but just listen to your body. We're just trying to gently open up the hips and this should feel nice. 
not too challenging. Knees come back in toward the chest. You can grab onto the backs of the thighs this time and start to take some rocks up and down the spine. And if rocking up and down the spine doesn't feel good, you can just come to a seated meditation where we'll all meet anyway. One more rock, come up to an easy cross-legged seat. Once you come to an easy cross-legged seat, just make sure you're feeling even. So that might mean shifting side to side a little bit. And then uh, bring the hands to the knees, round the spine, chin in toward the chest. And then inhale, lift. So the gaze can come up and protect the length in the backside of the neck, shoulders away from the ears. And then exhale, round the whole spine. Eyes can be closed too if you're comfortable with that. Inhale, lift up. So it's like cat cow, but we're seated. Stay with your breath and your pace. So don't feel like you have to stay with me. The length of my breath is probably a little different than yours. Let's do one more. Next time you have the spine rounded, stay there and then just come back up to your neutral spine. And you'll walk the left fingertips out to the left, reach the right arm up and over, getting into that side body. Keep that right hip rooted. Sometimes it wants to go with you to the left. And we'll take this into a gentle twist. So come back up to seated. Right hand can just rest on the shin in front, left fingertips back behind you, sit up tall. Go most of the way into the twist, but not all the way. And then start to face forward with the torso, reach the arms all the way up and you'll start to fold forward over the legs. So Sukhasana legs, easy cross-legged seat, let the head and the neck go. You can definitely use blocks underneath the hands if the mat feels far away, or you could put a block or two underneath the forehead or skip them if you're used to not using them. and start to walk the hands back in, bring the hands back behind you, lean back, switch the crossing of the legs, bring the other shin in front, walk the right hand out to the right, reach the left arm up and over, get into that side body, breathe into the left side rib cage. Back up to center, just a gentle twist. So left hand on that front shin, right hand back behind you, sit up tall. Don't go all the way in. Just find a way you can get most of the way there, leaving some room. So we go easy on the spine to start. Then come back to face center, inhale the arms all the way up, exhale, fold, getting into the other hip. So hands come down in front of you. See where this hip needs. And you might be seated upright and still feeling a hip stretch and that's fine. Slowly start to bring the hands in toward the body, bring the hands back behind you and bring the feet to the mat, uh, grab onto the tops of the shins, sit up as tall as you can, knees and feet together, start to lift the feet, reach the arms forward. So boat pose, Navasana, good. Lengthen that spine. It's like the chest is lifting straight up to the sky. 
and then lower down if you want to Ardha Navasana. You can always stay in Navasana if you'd like. Come back, Navasana, Ardha Navasana. So legs are together, squeezing together, Navasana, Ardha Navasana. This time, hug the knees in toward the chest, rest the head back down to the mat, grab onto the backs of the thighs, take those rocks, if that's working in your body, and see if you can come to a forward fold at the top of the mat. So you'll need to build a little bit of momentum and you can definitely use the hands to get there, especially to start. So forward fold, top of the mat, feet, let's go feet wide. So wider than hip width distance, clasp opposite elbows, let the head and the neck go, and then start to play with where the weight's falling in the feet. Bring the weight so that it's a little bit more into the balls of the feet and lighter in the heels. That'll get your hips over the heels and it'll give you a little bit more length in the backsides of the legs. And with the feet wider, you can keep the legs a little bit straighter, but you can still have a bend if that feels good, especially if the hamstrings are really tight. Switch the clasp with the elbows, nod the head yes a few times, no a few times, and then see if the body's going where it wants to go. So if you shift it back onto the heels, come forward onto the balls of the feet, keep lifting the hips up as much as the hamstrings will allow. hands come down to the mat in front of you. You can turn the heels in toes out. So your feet are already a little bit wider. We'll come into a squat and you don't need to come all the way down. If you have a block, you can always sit on a block and rest the hips there. And that's still a really nice hip opening. If you feel comfortable coming down into your squat right away, you could either keep the hands down, especially if the heels are lifted. If the heels are down, then you can bring the hands in front of you using the elbows to keep the knees going straight over the toes. And then we lift the chest, lift the pelvic floor. Think about a long line of energy going up through the crown of the head. That always helps me get more length and feel more connected. Stay with your breath. Then bring the hands down to the mat straighten the legs, toes point forward. And now you can heel toe the feet more like hip width distance. So narrower than the wider distance, bring the hands to the hips, put a bend in the knees, press yourself all the way up to standing on the inhale, circle the arms up, palms come together on the exhale, cactus the arms, elbows down and back, chest is nice and open. Inhale, reach up two more like that. Exhale, open up across the chest. It's like you're trying to bring the elbows together toward the lower back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up. This time, bring the, elbow, uh, the hands to the lower back. So the fingertips will just point down. Unless you want a big wrist opening, you could bring the fingertips to point up. If it's too soon, which most likely for most of us it is, unless you're really open in that area. So hug those outer elbows in, root down through the legs and the feet, and then think, locate the tailbone and the pubic bone. You want those two to be aiming toward one another. That'll keep your hips in the right spot. And then start to lift the chest, spread it open, and maybe the gaze goes up, but just take it easy. This isn't our deepest back bend. It's just one to kind of wake up our practice and start getting into it. El the outer elbows are still hugging in and the breath is still strong. And you can always stay looking forward if that's more comfortable. And then come back up to center, interlace the fingers behind the back, stretch the arms back behind you, the knuckles back behind you, feet are still hip width distance. Put a little bend in the knees and then fold over the legs. Knuckles go up and back. And it's up to you how straight the legs are. So don't feel like they have to be all the way straight. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. Get the weight into the balls of the feet. Hands come down to the mat, come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. So hands can slide up the sides of the legs. 
and then bring the fingertips back down to the mat. Let's step the left foot back coming into a runner's lunge and we'll set that back knee down right away. Reach the arms all the way up. So heads right over the hips. Keep that. Just bring the left arm forward and the right arm back. So you're coming into a twist from the upper abdomen chest area. You can keep that gaze forward or you can look to the right or even at that back hand, but spread the arms out wide, get tall in the spine up through the crown of the head. Then start to bring the gaze back forward. This back hand, the right hand comes to the sacrum, flip that front palm up and reach that left arm up. Tailbone to pubic bone, pubic bone to tailbone. Start to look forward. If you started to look up, bring the arms out wide, right back to where we were. This time, left hand comes underneath the left shoulder, right arm reaches up. You can stay here with the back knee down or tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, but be light in that bottom hand. Right hand comes down to the mat, big step forward. Left foot meets the right foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Right foot steps back behind you, runner's lunge. Set that back knee down. Inhale the arms all the way up, low lunge. Once you find that straight line, reach the right arm forward, left arm back, and you can start with the gaze forward. Once you feel steady in the legs, maybe you start to look to the left or at that back hand. Spreading the arms out wide, still lifting up through the spine. Then bring the gaze back forward, nice and slow. Left hand comes to the sacrum, right hand flips up, reach up, tailbone to pubic bone, pubic bone to tailbone. Bring the gaze forward, right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back, we're back in that twist. Gaze forward down to the mat, right hand comes down underneath the right shoulder, left arm reaches up, Back knee stays down, or you can lift it, pressing that right leg way back. Left hand comes down to the mat, right foot steps forward, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Put a bend in the knees, come into chair pose, Utkatasana, weight in the heels, arms reach up, feeling a little bit more openness in the upper body. Rise up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Inhale, circle the arms all the way up. On the exhale, cactus the arms, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up, exhale, our elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up, exhale, arms down or elbows down and back. This time interlace the fingers, one finger over, point the knuckles back, put a little bend in the knees, slowly fold back down over the legs. Try not to let the shoulders sink into the ears. Then bring the hands to the mat, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold back to chair pose, Utkatasana. Then bring the hands together right in front of the heart. Start to shift the weight over to the right foot. You can even look at the right foot if that helps you. Lift the left foot, step it back to warrior two. So the ball of the left foot lands, you spin the heel down flat and you open up warrior two. Trying to get those hands in line with the shoulders. It's always nice every once in a while to spot check that left hand. It kind of goes wherever it wants. Make sure there's some weight in the back leg and it's not all going into the front leg. Flip the front palm up, reverse warrior.
So upper body is going to stay the same. We're going to transition to the back of the mat, extended side angle. So straighten the front leg, turn the toes to the back of the mat, left forearm, left thigh. You're still reaching up and back, but now the left toes point toward the back of the mat. Elbow to thigh. Reverse warrior, left foot in front. So left arm reaches up and back, right arm reaches softly down the leg. Straighten that front leg, warrior two facing the top of the mat. Spread the arms out wide, change the feet. Left toes angle in, right toes angle out. Vira Bajrasana two. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Come onto the ball, the back foot. Step that left foot forward to meet the right foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together on the exhale. Cactus the arms, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach back up. Two more like that. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up. Last exhale, hold it here. Interlace the fingers, one finger over. Put a little bend in the knees, fold over the legs. So you're just switching back and forth with the index finger to try to even things out. Up to you how much you straighten the legs. Let the head and the neck go. Pull the shoulders away from the ears. Try to get a little heavier in the balls of the feet and lift the hips up so you get some length in the hamstrings, backsides of the legs. Hands come to the mat, inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold back down, chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up. Hands come together, right down in front of the heart. So press into the hands to keep the chest open, shift the weight over to the left foot, hover the right foot. And it's like you're pressing something away from you with the sole of the right foot to extend that leg back, warrior two. Spin the right heel down flat, spread the arms out wide. Heads right over the hips. You're still rising up through the spine, up through the crown of the head. Flip the front palm, reverse warrior. Keep that lunge in the front leg as you reach up and back. So upper body stays where it is. Just straighten the front leg, turn the toes to face behind you, forearm to thigh, right forearm to thigh and you're in extended side angle parts of a Kanasana facing the back of the mat. Take this to reverse warrior, right arm up and back. Then straighten the front leg, warrior two facing the top of the mat, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes all the way out. Windmill the hands down to the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot. You need to separate the feet a little bit. Step that right foot forward, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, circle the arms all the way up to standing, hands come together on the exhale, cactus the arms, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up, exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up, elbows down and back. This time hands to the lower back, just like we did before. So it's like a standing camel, feet hip width distance apart. Hug those outer elbows in, lift and spread the chest. And we've done some back bending. So if you feel like you can keep the tailbone and the pubic bone going into one another and you wanna take it a little deeper, you can just take it easy. Find where the right place is for you. Then come back up to standing, interlace the fingers, point those knuckles back, little bend in the knees, fold down over the legs.
hands come down to the mat, but walk the hands forward so they're underneath the shoulders and you're coming up onto the fingertips. You could use blocks too. Hug the left knee in toward the nose. So that right leg is standing and then press that left foot way back, reach the heart forward. Inhale, bring the knee in toward the nose. Exhale, extend. Inhale, bring the knee in toward the nose. Exhale, extend. This time, inhale, bring the knee in toward the nose. Set that left foot down. Inhale, chair pose. Hands come together right in front of the heart. Keep pressing into the hands. Shift the weight over to the right foot. Lift that left leg, warrior three. Press that left leg back. Reach the heart forward. Left inner thigh is working hard to go up toward the sky. Bend the standing leg, warrior two, reach back with that left foot, windmill the arms. Then this time we're transitioning to warrior one at the back of the mat. So straighten the front leg, that right arm comes down and then it reaches up. Heel to heel or a little bit wider. Interlace the fingers behind the back humble warrior take your time bow down come back up warrior one reach the arms forward and up warrior two back at the top of the mat change the feet look forward right arm forward Windmill the hands down to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Separate the feet. Step that left foot forward. Fold down. Uttanasana. Forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Bring the hands down in front of the shoulders or fingertips. Hug that right knee in toward the nose. And then exhale. Push that right leg away. Inhale. Bring the knee in. Exhale, push it away. Inhale, bring the knee in. Step that right foot next to the left foot, chair pose. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Start to shift the weight over to the left foot. Lift that right knee away from the mat, right foot away from the mat. Warrior three, take your time. Push that right leg way back, reach the chest forward. Hands still together at the heart. Hips are level, as level as we can get them. Then putting a bend in the standing leg, you're stepping back to warrior two. Straighten the front leg, angle on the left toes, turn the right toes all the way out, bring that left arm down and up, warrior one facing the back of the mat. Square everything forward, keep that back leg straight, front leg, nice lunge. Then interlace the fingers back behind you, fold down, bow into humble warrior. Release the fingers, come back up, warrior one. Warrior two toward the top of the mat. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Step that right foot forward, top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold, separate the feet back to hip width distance, or maybe a little bit wider for your malasana yogi squat. Sit the hips down, bring the hands together in front of you, open up across the knees. So you can use those elbows to open them up and any modifications fine. You can support the hips with the block or the hands if the heels don't touch.
hands come back down to the mat, straighten the legs, heel toe the feet back to hip width, bring the hands to the hips, put a little bend in the knees, press yourself all the way up to standing. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach the arms up. This time, elbows down and back. Hands to the lower back, standing Ustrasana, camel pose. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. Lift and spread the chest. Hug those outer elbows in. Keep the legs strong. So you want to feel that energy through the soles of the feet all the way up through the crown or all the way back through the crown of the head. Everything working together. Then start to come back up to standing. Interlace the fingers back behind you. Little bend in the knees. Fold forward over the legs. Hands come down to the mat, fingertips in front of the shoulders. You just lift up halfway. So you get that long spine. Start to shift the weight over to the right foot, left knee in toward the nose on your inhale. And then exhale, stretch that left leg back behind you. Reach the heart forward. Inhale, curl up, bring it in. Exhale, stretch it back. This time, inhale, bring it in, lift that left foot up high, and then step the left foot next to the right foot. Chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up. Hands come together, right down in front of the heart, shift the weight over to the right foot, warrior three, left leg goes back, heart reaches forward. Slow transitions, make sure that core is helping you to stabilize. Take it back to warrior two, take your time, open up the arms wide. Straighten the front leg, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes all the way out, sweep that right arm down and forward, Virabhadrasana one. You can always widen the stance a little bit if it feels too narrow from that transition. Interlace the fingers behind the back, lift and spread the chest, bow forward, humble warrior. Come back up, Virabhadrasana one. Then open it up, warrior two facing the top of the mat. This time, straighten the front leg. We're taking triangles, so if you feel like you have a long stance, you could heel toe the back foot in, reach that right arm forward, then down, left arm up, trikonasana. Look down at the right foot, bend the right knee, reach forward ahead of that right pinky toe. You could use a block underneath the hand too, if you'd like, and then shift forward, half moon. Ardha Chandrasana. So that standing leg and standing hip are really strong underneath you. Lift up through the outer corner of that left heel. That's the highest point of the pose. And then hug the belly so that the belly pushes the sternum forward. And then maybe you change the gaze from the ground. Maybe you look to the left or even up. You're feeling good. And we'll step back to triangle pose. So start to bend the standing leg, reach back with that left foot, come up to standing. Hands come to the hips. And then look forward at the right foot, put a little bend in that right knee, step the left foot forward, you're back up to standing. Inhale, bring the hands together overhead. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach up, hands together. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up, hands together. Exhale, elbows down and back. This time, hands to the lower back. Either way you want to turn the fingertips is fine. Hug those outer elbows in. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. And then lift and spread the chest. You can look up. You can look forward. Looking forward helps if you're feeling wobbly or insecure in the pose. And then the next step is to bring the gaze up if you're ever comfortable with that. 
then come back up to standing, interlace the fingers, make sure you're switching back and forth, little bend in the knees, fold down over the legs. Hands come back down to the mat, walk the hands forward in front of the shoulders, coming up onto those fingertips. So you get a lift in the chest. Uh, switch the weight over to the left foot, right knee in toward the nose on your inhale, and then extend, push that right leg back. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale, push the right leg back. Inhale, knee to nose. Right foot steps next to the left foot, chair pose. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Shift the weight over to the left foot. Hover that right foot, warrior three. Take your time getting there. Feel that core get you there. So we did that last little exercise to get the core fired up. So you get that support as you transition and hold the pose. And then you're stepping it back to warrior two. And it can be a wider warrior two, arms out wide. Warrior one facing the top of the mat, straighten the front leg, turn those left toes in, right toes out, left arm comes down and up, warrior one. Interlace the fingers behind you, bow forward, humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Then warrior two, top of the mat. Straighten the front leg, triangle pose, option to shorten the stance. Look down at the left foot, bend the left knee as much as you can, reach forward ahead of that left pinky toe. And I'm shifting forward onto the ball of my back foot, almost the big toe, and then shift forward even more to lift that right leg up, outer corner of the right heel, highest part of the pose, hug the belly in, open up across the chest, get that left standing hip underneath you. It wants to go out to the left. So you have to hug it in to keep the knee pointing forward and those left toes pointing straight forward. Change the gaze if you want to. Then bend the standing leg, reach back with that right foot, triangle, but just to transition to standing. So once you get it, you don't need to go that low down, rise up to standing, bring the hands to the hips, just rest here for a sec. Look forward at the left toes, put a bend in that left knee, step that right foot forward to meet the left foot. Back to Tadasana, inhale, circle the arms all the way up. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, elbows down and back. Inhale, reach up. This time, elbows down and back, hands to the lower back, Get strong in the legs, work the pose all the way up, coming into your standing camel. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone. Come back up to standing, interlace the fingers behind the back, stretch the knuckles back, a little bend in the knees, fold down over the legs, knuckles behind the head. Hands to the mat, inhale up halfway. Hands down in front of the shoulders, shift the weight over to the right foot, left knee in toward the chest. Exhale, push that left leg back, reach the heart forward. Inhale, bring it in. Exhale, push that left leg back. Inhale, bring it in, left foot next to the right foot. Reach the arms up, bend the knees, chair pose. Hands come together right in front of the heart. Shift the weight over to the right foot. Lift that left leg, warrior three. Warrior two.
warrior one back of the mat, straighten the front leg, turn the toes, right arm down and then back up. Interlace the fingers behind the back, humble warrior. Inhale to rise, warrior one. Warrior two, top of the mat, turn the toes to face forward. Straighten the front leg, right arm comes down, left arm reaches up, Trikonasana. Look down at that front foot, bend the right knee, reach forward, shift forward, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Back to triangle pose, bend the standing leg to land that back foot, then straighten the leg, reach the arms up. Back up to standing, hands to the hips. Look forward at the right toes, put a little bend in the right knee, step that left foot forward. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus the arms. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, cactus the arms, hands to the lower back. Find that back bend, pubic bone and tailbone, stay together. Lift the muscles in the legs, core strong. Come back up to standing, interlace the fingers, bend the knees, fold all the way back down over the legs. Hands come down to the mat, walk the hands forward at, just underneath the shoulders, shift the weight over to the left foot, right knee in toward the chest. Exhale, push that right leg behind you, reach the heart forward. Inhale, bring it in. Exhale, push it back. Inhale, bring it in. Right foot steps next to the left foot, chair pose. Hands come together right in front of the heart. Shift the weight over to the left foot, warrior three. Push that right leg back. Keep the chest reaching forward. Warrior two, bend that standing leg. Reach back with the uh, heel of the right foot and spread the arms out wide. Warrior one, facing the back of the mat. Straighten that back leg. Turn the toes to point toward the back of the mat. Reach the arms forward and up. Interlace the fingers behind the back, bow forward on the exhale, humble warrior. Back up, warrior one. Warrior two, facing the top of the mat. Straighten the front leg, triangle pose. Adjust the feet if you'd like. Look down at the left foot, bend the left knee, reach ahead of those left toes, Ardha Chandrasana, half moon. Press out through both feet, spread out through both arms, legs, reach the crown of the head forward. Step back to triangle. Land light with that back foot, reach the right arm up and then bring yourself up to standing. Hands to the hips, put a little bend in that left knee, step the right foot forward. Okay, so a little different. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. So Urva Hastasana, feet hip width distance apart. Press down through the soles of the feet, rise up through the crown of the head and the fingertips, but keep the shoulders in place. So notice if they're reaching up to the sky, keep them in place, but keep reaching the arms up. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back, right hip still points forward. Once you have that, you can look to the right or even at that back hand. So similar to what we did before, but now we're standing. Spread the arms out wide, stand as tall as you can. Opening up that right shoulder. Then bring the gaze back forward, reach the arms all the way up. On the exhale, fold down over the legs. Fingertips right underneath the shoulders. Hug the left knee in toward the nose. Exhale, push it back just like we did before. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale, push it back. 
Inhale, knee to nose, this time left foot steps next to the right, chair pose. Hands come together, right in front of the heart, shift the weight over to the right foot, lift the left leg, warrior three. Same twist we did before. Left arm doesn't have to touch the ground, reaches down toward the earth, right arm reaches up. So twisted half moon, those inner thighs are scissoring. You're lengthening through the crown of the head and keeping those legs super engaged. Hands slowly come back down to the mat. Step that left foot back two thirds of the way. Those toes are gonna point forward a little bit. Uh, pull the right hip back, left hip forward, and then you can just fold down over the right leg, pyramid pose, Parjvottanasana. Then look forward, step that left foot up to meet the right foot. On an inhale, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Urdhva Hastasana. So you're reaching the arms up, rooting down through the legs. Hips are pointing straight forward, tailbone and pubic bone coming together. Right foot reach, or right foot, right arm reaches forward, left arm reaches back. Keep that left hip forward. So you can see how you're setting this up already. You're opening up the chest to the left. You're getting those shoulders open. So that when we start to come into twisted half moon, you already have the upper body prepped for it. And we've already done so many warrior threes with the lower body. So you're ready for this. Come back up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, forward fold. Fingertips right in front of the shoulders. Keep the chest lifted and reaching forward. Hug that right knee in toward the nose and then exhale, push that right leg back. Inhale, knee to nose. Exhale, right leg back. Inhale, bring that knee in, step the right foot next to the left foot, chair pose. Exhale, hands come together right in front of the heart. Switch the weight over to the left foot, hug that right knee in toward the chest and then stretch that right leg back. Warrior three, find the arms twisted half moon. So right arm reaches down, it doesn't have to touch anything. Left arm reaches up, hug the belly in, open up across the chest, Press those feet away from you. Find the strength in the pose as you get your alignment. Hands come down to the, the ground in front of you. Step that right foot back two thirds of the way and then lift the chest up halfway. Fold down over the left leg. Pyramid pose, Parjvottanasana. And those of you with tight hamstrings, this is a good one for the legs. You don't want to come right into it. You got to be warm so you can work in some other yoga poses ahead of it. You can even do a modified pyramid pose to get to this pose once the legs are warm. Then start to look forward, bend that left knee, step the right foot up to meet the left foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, bring the hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. If you want a vinyasa, take it. But if you're feeling really good not doing in vinyasas, then just come to hands and knees right away. Looks like everybody really wanted a vinyasa. <laughs> All right, so hands and knees, tabletop, wherever you are. If you're in down dog, bring the knees down. Fold the mat if you're on a hard surface. If you're on a soft surface, you probably don't even need to do that. But we are definitely doing camel today on the knees. So uh, tops of the feet if you want to go real low, but it's always nice to start with toes tucked and then come up to standing on the knees. And we need space between the thighs because we want the knees hip width distance apart. It's also really nice to use your blocks here. If you have two blocks, they go right outside the ankles, 
especially if the feet feel really far away when you're doing camel pose. So fingertips down the back, lift and spread the chest, tailbone to pubic bone, pubic bone to tailbone. Those legs are strong. It's like you're trying to lift the inner thighs. And then maybe you walk the hands back to the heels or the blocks, lifting and spreading the chest keeping the gaze up or even forward here. Both of those options work. We come out the way we came in, hands to the lower back if you change that and then sit back onto the heels. You can untuck the toes if you haven't already. Hands can rest on the thighs, close the eyes and you feel that energy pumping through the body from such a big pose like camel. back up onto the knees, separate the feet. You're welcome to get those blocks outside of the ankles if you want to, if that was helpful. Hands to the lower back to start and up to you if you have the fingertips down or up. Pubic bone to tailbone, tailbone to pubic bone, root down through the legs, lift up through the abdomen, the chest, start to lean back if that's comfortable. Hands don't have to leave the lower back or you can play with bringing the hands back toward the heels. Lift and spread the chest wherever you are. Try to keep the hips over the knees. And then lengthen the lower back. So keep it long, core hugs in. And then slowly look forward, hands back up to the lower back, sit back onto the heels, rest. Hands on the thighs, close eyes. Last one, come back up to standing. You're most prepped for this one. Hands to the lower back, lift and spread the chest. Keep those legs strong, lean back, maybe. Hands come down to the feet, heels, whatever's right there. Blocks, maybe. Then slowly bring the hands back up to the lower back. Sit back onto the heels. That was it. Rest here, close the eyes. Enjoying the sensation of all the energy we can bring into the body with these poses or cool it down. Blink open the eyes. If you have the mat folded, just extend it out in front of you. And we'll keep the knees and the feet together. Take child's pose, but bring the arms back behind you. So forehead comes down to the mat. Arms can just rest, backs of the hands are next to the feet. And if this bothers your knees at all, then you can bring the hips up as high as you need to so that your knees stay quiet. Then bring the hands down in front of you, lift the chest, come to seated on your mat. So legs out in front of you. And let's bring um, the legs out in front of you extended, bring the right foot in, step the right foot over the left leg. And you could bend the left leg. You don't have to, you can keep it straight if you want to. Just try to keep the sole of this right foot down on the mat and then open the chest to the right, right fingertips back behind you, sit up tall so you're even in both hips and you can hook the elbow or you can just hang on to that knee the uh, outer edge of the right knee, if that feels better. So whichever one coming into a twist. Now you can come as deep as you want into this one. Start to bring the gaze back forward, slowly and wind. Bottom leg extends if it's bent, and then the top leg. Left foot comes in, step the left foot over the right leg. Option to bend the bottom leg. As long as you can stay even on the hips, you can keep that sole, the, the left foot down on the mat. And then left fingertips back behind you. Maybe you hug that knee in toward the chest to sit up as tall as you can in your twist or hook the elbow. See which one's working for you. Sometimes it's not the same thing every day. Like today for me, hugging the knee in feels great.
and start to bring the gaze back forward, slowly unwind the torso, extend the bottom leg, and then the top leg. And then we'll turn to face the side of the mat. So whichever side you can still see the screen is probably a good one to go. And then, so as you're sitting down, you're bringing the soles of the feet to the mat, toes turn out. So it's kind of like a squat, but we're seated and you're sitting up as tall as you can. You can bring the hands back behind you to start. And that's a nice way to get that length in the spine. If you feel like you can keep it with the hands in front of you, you can also do that. But if you find that everything starts to round and cave in, then just bring the hands back behind you and stay there. So this is a modified version of Upavishta Konasana we'll do a wide legged straddle. So you can stay right here or option, extend the legs out in, in front of you. And if your heels are on a hard surface, you can always scoop back until your heels are on the mat. And that can be a little bit more comfortable. So wide legged straddle knees and toes point up. If you have blocks, they're nice to use, but some of you may not need them. You can always bring um, the block all the way up against uh, the pubic bone and start to fold forward as long as the knees and the toes can stay up. You could also use the blocks underneath the hands, the chest, the head, just depends on how much space is between you and the mat. So knees and toes stay up. And then here you're keeping this an active pose. So if you feel like uh, the muscles aren't working in the legs, they kind of do in order to keep the knees and the toes up, but see if you can keep the glutes on a little bit too, those outer edges of the glutes. Start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to seated. If you have blocks in front of you, just set them off to the side. Bring the hands to the backs of the thighs to bend the legs. Bring the soles of the feet together. So Baddha Konasana, sitting up tall and then hinging forward. You can widen the elbows, let them rest on the legs. This one always feels good after Upavishta Konasana. Keep the spine long so that upper back wants to round. See if you can keep reaching the heart forward to stay a little deeper into the hips. And we'll come back up to seated, use the hands to bring the knees back together. If you're facing the side, turn to face forward, extend the legs out in front of you, reach the arms all the way up, Fold down over the legs, seated forward fold, Paschimottanasana. And start to come back up to seated and come into stillness, either a seated meditation or all the way down on your back for Shavasana. If you take Shavasana, make yourself comfortable. You could have the legs extended out in front of you. You could also still have the legs bent. So don't ever feel like you have to have the legs extended out in front of you. The goal is just to be on your back with the eyes closed in a way that you can let go of the body. Take a deeper breath wherever you are and exhale, drop in.
If you're in your seated meditation, stay right where you are. If you're in Shavasana on your back, start to find some movement in the hands and the feet. Stretch the arms overhead. And if you haven't already, bend the legs, walk the feet in. Roll over to one side, cradle the head and the arm. And using the hands, bringing yourself up to your meditation seat, sitting up tall, keeping the eyes closed. Bringing the hands together in front of you. Bow the head, take a moment, honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit, as well as everyone around you. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thank you. So there could be a lot of comfort in taking class with the same teacher all the time because you sort of have an idea of what's coming next or expectations. I was working really hard to change that. Basically whatever I can, but it's hard to come up with that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed today's class, especially staying a little lighter on the hands and uh, just changing the way that we flow all together. Thank you.